Okay, uh, again, good morning, class. And uh, now we are going to continue the part two of our farm machinery. So, we are now in planting and seeding equipment. So, crop planting operations may involve placing seeds or tubers such as in potatoes in soil at a predetermined depth, random scattering or dropping of seeds in the field by broadcasting or setting play plants in the soil. So, uh, this is crop planting operations. So there are methods of seed distribution. The first one is broadcasting, the second one is drill seeding, and the three is precision planting, and four is hill dropping. So broadcasting is the oldest and simplest method of sowing seeds wherein the seeds are randomly scattered over the field. It is usually done manually by broadcasting or by machine is more accurate and rapid than by hand. Number two is uh, by drill seeding, the random dropping and of covering of seeds in forest to give definite rows. And three is precision planting, the accurate placing of single seeds at about equal intervals in rows. And hill dropping is a placing groups of seeds at about equal intervals in rows. So in precision planting, this is uh, more accurate, no? Uh, single seeds are uh, placed in equal intervals in so in four in rows. So these are row crop planting system. You no, know? so the first one is the four row or lister planting. Second one is bed planting, and the last one is the flat planting. So actually, um, there is no definite. Um, uh, or efficiency or most uh, advantageous in these different types of uh, conditions but it depends upon the type of uh, crop that you are planting you know? so classification of planting equipment number one is the row crop planter which uh, plant seeds in rows far enough apart to permit cultivation of the crop. So, uh, it's done by trailing or we have drill a row crop planter designed to deposit seeds continuously in straight columns. No? So, uh, we have here the tractor is doing the planting operation. We have the hill drop, a row crop planter designed to deposit one or more seeds in a hill in equal intervals. And we have narrow row. Then we have rear tractor mounted, it's also a drill type, which is hill drop. Then transplanter or plant uh, setter, an equipment for placing growing plants or plant uh, parts in the soil. <coughs> Now take note here, uh, this is the planter with fertilizer application. So this uh, 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 portion where the, the soil is open. No? So here in this portion that the seeds is uh, being dropped and the next uh, mechanism here is to close the, the soil no? para matabunan ang mga seeds. Now, in the other pictures we have, this is the older uh, prototype when two persons are, are uh, assigned no, to individually drop the plants here in the chute. No? And this is deposited in the row while this tractor is moving forward. And now we have new uh, technologies which are transplanter. Uh, that requires uh, this is uh, done automatically by the machine so broadcast crop planter or seeder so it drops the seed on the surface of the soil and do not have any covering attachment the seeds are usually covered by harrowing so in gate seeder we have the narrow and wide track 
reader or motor and we have using the airplane no, in broadcasting so this one here uh, for broadcaster or uh, for seed chemical or fertilizer no so this one here is rotating no uh, i don't know which direction clockwise or counterclockwise but the idea here is that the fertilizer or the seeds here when it drops down here because this is rotating in a uh, certain rpm so the force of uh, or centrifugal force will throw away in uh, scattering the seeds in this direction so we have the grain drill place the seeds of small grains and grasses on the ground in narrow rows this is six to eight inches apart at a uniform depth they are classified as plain drills or fertilizer drills a plain drill has a hopper and feeds for the drilling of seeds only while a fertilizer drill has a large seed box which is divided in lengthwise into two compartments one for the seeds and the other for the fertilizer Number four is planting attachments for other equipment. So this is an example of a multi-purpose or pastor grill. Grill. No? So here, uh, this is for covering the soil. No? So I think this is moving in this direction, going here to the left. So this one is uh, the culter, no, and the chisel furrow will open the the soil and we have the fertilizer is dropped here then next is the uh, grain and the grass and this is the one that will cover the soil then number five is cultivation and weeds insect control equipment cultivation requires a tool that steer the surface of the soil to shallow depth in such a manner that young weeds will be destroyed and crop growth is promoted after planting the soil can be cultivated before emergence of the plant or crops cultivation usually begins soon after the emergence of the young crop seedlings as weeds generally emerge about the same time as the crop no? so uh, you have to cultivate in order to dis uh, destroy or uh, disturb the, the uh, condition of the weeds in between the rows of crops so the purpose or objectives of cultivation is one is to retain moisture by killing the weeds or by loose mulching on surface and uh, or retaining uh, rainfall no? and the second one is develop plant food then to aerate the soil for oxygen to enter the soil and fourth is to promote the activity of microorganisms so the microorganisms is very important not to to produce to uh, reduce the the fertilizer into uh, uh, a form that can be uptaken by the plant itself so factors that uh, influence the method of cultivation to be adapted so it depends upon the area of the farm and the second one is kind of crop present the field so on sanga classing a crop no the soil type and condition so maybe kung basa kayo it doesn't need to be cultivated no kayo mugahi ra na ang soil kung sobra ka basa the rainfall in the area so kung sigig ulan or basa kanunay then number five is type of farming practice you know, for example kung gibroadcast ni mo ang imong seeds uh, it's uh, really difficult to have cultivation no? because there is no uh, uh, definite uh, rows and then the six is kind of power available in the locality so these are tools used for cultivation the sweep or used extensively for weed control since shallow cultivation is generally desired so these are the types of sweeps for cultivators no so it is designed in order to cut the uh, 
the root system of the weeds in between the uh, row crops so these are the sweet cultivators you can see there no this is the furrower uh, and we have the in the right one is the sugar cane furrower in the left is the corn furrower so it looks uh, almost uh, similar but maybe it's just in the matter of distances no okay there's different uh, uh, distance uh, recommendations we have number three is weed knife we have number four is the shovel we have the single point the double point the hoof shovel or the spear head so these are the different types of shovels for cultivators so these are the pictures of cultivators no it's like a spring uh, harrow number five is the rotating blade the l shape and the rectangular shape so in the left side is the, the the light duty and the right is the heavy duty rotating blade cultivators no so and in the left is uh, for single row cultivation then classification mechanical row crop cultivate uh, cultivators according to their attachment to the tractors number one is the central for uh, forward tractor mounted you know, so uh, this is attached in the front of the tractor the rear mounted we have special cultivating equipment the bit and bean cultivator so this is designed for bit and bean so it depends upon the distances of uh, the cultivator here uh, the distances of the four rows we have the lister cultivator and this one is the row weeders field cultivator subsoil and chisel cultivators so these are combinations no? number four is the rotary hook cultivators so you see in the picture it is uh, rotating no? number five is the plant thinning machines so in the left is the upland thinner so you have uh, in the right is the lowland thinner so this is the purpose of uh, cultivator no? to destroy the, the weeds and uh, improve also the soil condition number five point one is the mechanical cultivation or weeding so general methods in controlling the weeds insects and plant diseases so number one is mechanical cultivation or weeding number two is selective burning or flaming number three is chemical spraying number four is manual weed control and number five is flooding so we'll uh, uh, discuss this one by one in the next slides we have factors affecting the selection of the method for controlling weeds number one is the type and age of the crop number two is the type and size of the weeds number three is the timeliness and number four is available equipment so these are the example of manual weeding tools no so we have the machete we have the garden hoe and we have here the common one we can see in most of our rice uh, fields is the lowland rice rotary weeder i don't know if uh, we are still using this type of weeder now uh, maybe in small rice farms uh, this one is the animal and tractor powered cultivators now this is uh, can be attached to a tractor or to a carabao so this is animal drawn by five time between row cultivators so this uh, picture is the ruling cultivators you see there uh, in the left upper side we have you can see the, the crops now in between the cultivators 
So this one is the rad uh, weeder. Now the next one is the flame weed control. Also, um, by burning the the, the weeds uh, in between the crop. So these are pictures of the uh, flame control weeder. Methods and equipment used in applying chemicals for weed control. So we have the fumigation. So method applying gaseous pesticide. So by fumigation. Number two is dusting. The application of pesticide in dust form. So it can be done by tractors and you can see in the left and the right side is by application of uh, using airplane no? uh, you can see this in the bow in the um, banana plantations number three is spraying the application of pesticide in liquid form so types of uh, manual sprayers we have the compressed air sprayer we have the backpack or knapsack uh, sprayer and backpack power sprayer no? so this one is motorized or there is an engine no? you just you don't have to pump it yourself number four is control droplet application or cda sprayer it forms uh, droplets by running a small stream of liquid spray solution on a spinning tooth disc Droplets are formed as they are flung from the teeth of the disc. Number five there is the electrostatic sprayers. No? Uh, it is designed to elect uh, electrically charge the spray droplets. So there is a powerful attraction between the plant and the charged droplets. No? So it will attract uh, to, to the plant. Now this is very important no? uh, so that you can also take note of this in, especially if you have uh, farms or neighbor, neighboring farms. No? Many farmers spray the remaining solution on the crop thereby applying more spray than is required or low fall. Sabi na kung nanadaghang sobra no? So para dili na mausik inalan lang i-spray nato sa lang crop. Others dump the remaining uh, remainder somewhere in canals or rivers or other uh, source of water so this is uh, very dangerous no because maybe animals or uh, fishes will die no and then you you eat the the fish nga nakakaon po sa mga chemicals and uh, later on you will also uh, get sick a proper disposal site in a secluded area away from the residential area should have a wash down area for the sprayer so you have to take note on that so that uh, it will also uh, help in preventing mga sakit no? chemical control of insects most of the spraying equipment in weed control can also be used to apply insecticides so for example this one this is fungus or mist blowers use oil based sprays to control mosquitoes fungi and other pests no? so in the left side is the handheld fogger then the right one is the shoulder carried fogger so uh, I think this is very useful nowadays no? that we have COVID no? uh, we have to fog or uh, spray uh, to kill the virus and uh, in other areas where na ay kaning uh, sakit nga mga mosquitoes no uh, this is very useful backpack fogger so this is a picture how this is applied or the right one is the orchard mist Now, spraying dusting equipment, the problem of controlling insect, pest, and plant diseases makes it necessary for a large percentage of farmers and orchards to include in their farm equipment machines for applying either dust or liquid pesticides and fungicides. 
the timing of the spraying or dusting operation should also be considered to be effective it should be done when the prevailing wind velocity is below 16 kilometers per hour no? so uh, this is dangerous if you, if you have uh, this velocity of the wind is higher than 16 it will uh, spread to other neighboring areas <coughs> so kind of spray materials number one is inorganic compounds compounds of mineral origin mainly compounds of an antimony arsenic and barium uh, arsenic no this is uh, dangerous because uh, it also will affect our lungs number two is organic compounds these are synthetic compounds like 2,4-D toxifin etc never, never newer groups of these compounds are the denitro derivatives of phenol and chrysol and the chlorinated hydrocarbons of this latter group uh, DDT is the best known so these are mga chemicals that are used and number three is pro petroleum oils used alone or to supplement the action of insecticides insecticides and herbicides oils are often added to spray solution as stickers stabilizers and conditioning agents so these are additives no, on petroleum oils <coughs> so functions of sprayer the main function of the spray is to break the liquid into droplets of effective size and distribute them uniformly over the surface to be protected. Another function is to regulate the amount of insecticide to avoid excessive application that might prove harmful or wasteful. And so that is the function of the sprayer to evenly distribute. No? So function of the nozzle, so the nozzle is the all important mechanisms which breaks the spray liquid into the desired size of droplets for application to the surface to be sprayed. The nozzles vary with respect to the rate of discharge, the angle of spray and the type of spray pattern that is hollow cone, solid cone or flattened, flat fan. Now actually you can adjust the type of nozzles. No? Uh, which uh, pattern you, you wish to to form the control of spray application so the amount or volume of spray to be applied per unit area depends upon the forward speed of the sprayer number two is the number of nozzles the rate of the nozzles discharge so this is the formula for computing the spray application rate no so 1000 multiplied by the discharge per nozzle over uh, operating speed of sprayer then nozzle spraying uh, spacing so for example we have here it is decided to apply 230 liters of per hectare of spray using a sprayer whose nozzles are 30 centimeter apart so its nozzle delivers about 0.35 liters per minute how fast must the sprayer be you know? so you just uh, use the formula given earlier and uh, supply all the, the given and you can solve for uh, the speed of uh, or the rate of uh, the application which is 3 kilometers per hour So classification of sprayers, we have the manual sprayer. This is portable manual sprayers are classified as the plunger or piston type, which uses a pump, a pump to press the liquid chemical, and a two is B is the compressor type, <coughs> utilizes compressed uh, air to push out the liquid, and number two is the power sprayers. This is operated with either internal combustion engines or electric motors. No? So, so this is the classification of power sprayers. <coughs> Number one is the hydraulic sprayers. 
the spray pressure is built up by the direct action of the pump on the liquid spray materials. The pressure thus forces the liquid through the nozzles, which break the spray into proper sized droplets and disperse them in the spray pattern design. So this is the hydraulic uh, sprayer. Number two is the hydropneumatic sprayers. Uh, the spray liquid is carried in a pressure tank and the spraying pressure is developed by means of an engine-powered air compressor. The spray material does not pass through a pump or contact any other moving parts. So, it is uh, using air pressure. No? <coughs> the third one is the blower sprayer also known as a concentrate or mist sprayers and have been developed to apply pesticides in a concentrated form. These are used for treating large areas of fruit trees, large shade trees, vegetables, and certain other crops. So, murag ibuga na siya nga to sa trees. No? The aerosol generators or fog machines it disperses the spray material in the form of extremely fine droplets, about 1 to 50 microns in diameter, which remain airborne for a considerable period of time. More like, uh, oh yeah, fog machines. The fixed wing air sprayers. The use of an airplane to apply and distribute spray material has become one of the most popular and economic method of applying insecticides and fungi sites to agricultural crops. <coughs> Rot uh, rotary wing aircraft sprayer. Um, the rotary wing helicopter used for spraying orchards and areas where fixed wing airplanes have di difficulty in maneuvering. So the use of helicopter. Now, the next uh, activity in the farm is fertilizing equipment. Fertilizers are required in soils which are defi deficient in plant food elements, principally uh, nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium. If a land is planted to crops over a long period of time, the soil will lose its nutrients causing the yield, uh, the yield to decrease gradually. So that's the reason why we have to apply fertilizer. No? Sandy soils lose plant food elements rapidly because these are leached out by rainfall or irrigation water. So Sandy soil has uh, bigger mga particles. No? That's why ang young fertilizer just drain quickly. So these are the different forms of fertilizer. The first one is the manure or organic uh, fertilizer. The next one is the granules no? in the form of pellets. And we have the liquid form and we have the gas form. So in applying of manure, um, these are just broadcast in, in the field no? using machines. So we have the box type and we have the flail type or side loading. <coughs> and this one is the closed tank, so ibugada sa likod. No? Now application of dry or granular fertilizer. A is about casting before plowing. B is deep uh, placement using chisel type cultivators. See it broadcasting and mixing into the soil after plowing and before planting. B is applied during planting operation. A is side dressing application on growing root crops or broadcasted as top dressing on solid planted crops. And F is drilled into the established pastures and other sides with special equipment. So it depends. No, you have to consider the cost and you have to consider also the. Uh, timeliness no sometimes this operation is combined <laughs> combined with other activity like uh, cultivation <coughs> so mechanical granular fertilizer broadcasters we have here the tractor mounted you know, uh, we have the truck mounted 
So again, as I uh, explained earlier, we have a disc here that is rotating. So when the granules dropped here, so it is uh, thrown out by uh, the uh, circuit, circulating motion of the disc or the centrifugal force. We have the fertilizer drill. And this one is the aircraft fertilizer application. <coughs> application of liquid fertilizer by low pressure on the ground surface no so uh, by the use of the gravitational force on the crop foliage and a little bit of high pressure so we have high pressure the tractor mounted and hydros ammonia applicator so this is the no pressure is done by gravity it's mixed liquid fertilizer so soil amendments soil amendments are not fertilizers but are applied to the soil to improve its chemical or physical condition so either centrifugal or drop type broadcasters are employed to apply the soil amendments so this is uh, lime lime is useful for decreasing soil acidity so to increase the soil pH no and it's the most common commercial soil amendments no? so if your farm is uh, acidic so lime is applied it is uh, usually applied before planting and then work into the soil but it can also be applied at any stage without injury to the crop the next one is the sulfur is added to the soil to increase its acidity so decrease the soil PS no so for example your your area farm is uh, the Asian pH <coughs> the the crops has different pH requirement no so so it depends upon the crop you you wanted to plant <coughs> so it's the last step which is the harvesting so Muhammadita harvesting is the highest point and most important of the agriculture calendar for it is the time when the fruits of the farmers labor are about to be realized timeliness is very essential here thus a peak work demand of course at the harvest time so uh, malipay na ang farmer during this time no okay is the fruit of the labor the phases of grain harvesting the first one is reaping so this is the cutting of the stalks with the mature grains from the plant uh, main plant body then next one is the threshing the removal of the mature grains from the cut stalks and a is the cleaning c is the cleaning the removal of any foreign body from the threshed uh, grains so this is uh, particularly for mga grains no like rice uh, sa panguban corn ah, dili corn kining mga uh, other grains uh, so these activities are are applied so this one is the manual reaping or pag uh, tawag kong ani ani no? so they have different techniques and sa amo is using the garam no so this one is the sickle or garab, smooth and serrated sickle. The, we have the sheath. So we have the mechanical uh, reaper. So this is a picture of early animal drone reaper before. <coughs> so the next one is the grain binder. So after reaping the we have to connect collect it and then uh, bind it no tapukon uh, siya then uh, the bottom is the example of rice reaper attached to a hand tractor you no know, so um, this is the hand tractor the left side is the reaper front mounted when a four wheel tractor so 
and uh, self-propelled uh, reaper. No? So this is the cutter of the stock. No, so this is rotating to collect all the grains or the cut stalks, and then it is collected here. Na ani um, conveyor going in this direction here. So this one is yung ato mag uh, trash, no? So this is actually uh, I think a combined uh, reaper. So this is on manual foot threshing, no? So in Africa they are. Uh, because they have no machine so they are using the foot in threshing <coughs> this is also another uh, technique in threshing no? we call this flail bunal bunala nila ang uh, ang uh, crop no? to remove the grain this one is the hampasan method in the left and then the right is the crushing rock no? so anha siya ipuspos para dili mulagpot ang iyang mga grains this one is the threshing rice grains using animals in India um, so they use the cows to uh, ilang pa lakaw lakawon din ha no? in order to remove the grains this one is the foot operated treadle or drum thresher used in Nepal now as you see in uh, Nepal uh, mostly uh, the worker are mga babae no so ang ang lalaki is just assistance lang so this one is an Egyptian threshing sled no so padagan nagana na nila silang sled in order to remove the grains this one is an axial flow thresher with oscillating cleaning screen so many are still using this one this one is an old North American stationary pressure and a recent model from Vietnam I think we have all uh, we have we can see mostly here also no in mga uh, big farms na in mga trash in mga ni. next is the manual cleaning or winnowing the manual winnowing left and using a hand operated winnower so na ane technique kung saan pag <coughs> uh, gamit sa kini um, winnower no um, so we have to look into kung asa pa doon ang hangin so mechanical cleaning a combined is a machine that performs all the three phase phases in grain harvesting that it that is it combines the functions of the reaper thresher and the grain cleaning into one mobile machine the basic operation functions of combined are the following to cut the standing grain feed the cut grain to the cylinder thresh the grain from the stock or stem then separate the grain from the straw and then clean the grain by removing shop and other foreign matter and lastly is the handle the grain from the combine to the tank and from the tank to the truck so that is the uh, basic operation in the combine no? the early combines were drawn by tractors horses or mules today most combines are either tractor drawn or pull type or self propelled so these are tractor drawn combine no? so nagko uh, na machines no? in the harvest uh, they just collect the grain the clean grain for kuana milling so this is the self propelled uh, combine no? so lagpad kayo ang iyang mga mga implement or kunang reaper this is the hillside combined design for sloping fields <coughs> so in draw, wind drawing machine a wind drawing machine consists of a power take of driven knife platform canvas and reel the heads of grains are clipped off and fall upon the traveling platform canvas which delivers the grain over one end into the stubble most wind drawing machines deliver the grain over the end farthest away from the standing grain 
center delivery drawing machines are also available so this is an example of wind drawing machine so I think uh, that is also thank you for um, listening watching so that ends my uh, uh, topic no on farm mechanization farm power and farm machinery so again thank you and um, I hope uh, we'll see each other very soon